Okay, now that we've found a product that we want to move forward with, we need to figure out how many different ways people can search for our product. How many different keywords or phrases can be searched that link to our product, all right? Because we want as many keywords as possible that relate to our product. And we want those keywords to have a great search volume. We want those to have a, at least a thousand searches a month. And we want those keywords to have a low review count. And we're gonna use those keywords to create our product listing, our title, our back in search terms. Um, we're gonna, you know, eventually we wanna uh, advertise for those keywords, but we need to find out what they are, right? So we found a product, we found the main keyword, but how are customers searching for this key for this product okay you know like for example there's so many different ways that people could search for a gym timer so we need to figure out how all right so the first step is we're going to go into helium 10 and under tools we're going to click magnet product research there's two main ways to find keywords um, for our product and this is going to be the first way using magnet the second way is going to be using uh, Cerebro. And basically that's gonna be the next video. We're gonna be looking at the keywords our competitors are using. So I'm gonna move this, let's do that right there. All right, so first thing, as we click magnet, we wanna enter in what's the main keyword that we uh, are using right now, gym timer. Well, let's run a new search. And magnet is gonna find high volume search terms that are relevant to your entered keyword. All right, so these are all different keywords that are relevant to our keyword. CrossFit uh, accessorios, that's obviously in Spanish. Countdown time clock, Rogue, spelled incorrectly, fitness equipment, giant countdown clock. You know, there's 10 people a month that are typing in Rogue wrong uh, and that are looking for, you know, whatever that is. So there's there's like lots of random keywords in here and we need to filter and we need to clean up this list because we don't wanna use all these random keywords for our product. We wanna use um, like the best 20 to 30 keywords that are in high search volume and low competition is to, in terms of review count. So we wanna clean up this list. Now, now, now before I do, I'm gonna explain each of these filters. Magnet IQ, it's the score based off of the number, the ratio Oh, excuse me, of estimated search volume versus number of competing products. So a high score means a relatively high number of searches compared to the number of competitors. A low, a low score means the opposite. All right. So as, as, does that make sense? A high score means how much of a search volume, okay, divided by how competitive that product is in terms of uh, competing products. Now there's lots of different ways to figure out competition. Competing products is a good way, but also average review count. Average review count is not shown in here. And just in case yours does not look like this, let me unclick this. So there you go. All right, so we have all this information, right? Kind of random. And we really don't need all this information. Uh, we wanna stay focused on what matters. So let's unclick this one, this one, this one. Search volume trend, sponsored ASINs, match type, and actually, I will leave that there. Title density. Match type is going to be if this product is, is shown organically, or it's if it's Amazon recommended, or um, if it's a sponsored or smart compete. Um, I actually want to take this out. I don't want to look at that right now. Okay, so we're just going to look at the magnet IQ. The search volume is how many people search for this keyword a month. And then the number of competing products. The so total number of products returned in a customer search using this keyword slash phrase. So when someone searches, hits count, that's going to show up over 10,000 products. Incredibly competitive. Let's see what that even is for crying out loud. So it's super random, right? And like, that doesn't even apply to our keyword. So let's, and then, so secondly, let's clean this list up. So there's 3,500 filtered keywords. And before we go through them one by one, let's um, open up this show filters and uh, let's, let's put some things in here. We don't wanna, we don't wanna put too much, okay? Uh, 
but let's put in the search volume of at least 500 searches a month by those filters. And that already dropped down to 145 keywords. Wow, that's pretty impressive. So there's still some kind of random things in here, but for the most part, uh, it's not gonna take long to go through these you know, three lists. And I don't wanna miss out on any potential gold. I don't wanna miss out on a keyword that like nobody's really trying to rank for. And it's, in a, it's you know, very well searched for and there's like zero competition. So let's just go through these one by one. And if we need to figure out, hey, does this keyword actually relate to my product? Then let's click this arrow. Nope, this is not a gym timer related product. So let's click that. Gym timer, absolutely. Gym boss interval timer. That is related to my keyword. Gym timer clock for home gym. Yes, workout clock for home gym. Yes, interval timer. Yep, boxing timer. Yeah, okay, good. Humidifiers large room. Now I'm gonna click that one out. Gifts woman, vanity mirror with lights, artificial Christmas tree with lights. Um, why do these keywords get uh, pulled in with together with this? I'm not sure why, in all honesty. Okay, this is not have to do with it, so I'm just gonna quickly just, yeah. All right. So I'm gonna delete those. All right. So we still have, what's the second list real quick? There's just so much junk in here. All right, so let's just say those are our top 130. Um, now I wanna look at the search volume for each of these. Which one is the highest? I'm gonna change 150. So it shows us all, all of these. So let's just also take out some of these. Uh, yeah, gym timers related to workout equipment. Okay, so as I've kind of narrowed down the list, right, you should definitely go through all of these, but let's say I have these really high search after keywords that can relate to my product Now I wanna to try to rank for. So digital clock, that can relate to so many different things. I would, I would have more sales if I just focus on my niche keyword, which is gym timer, rather than trying to rank for digital clock and have people not even buy it because they're not looking for a gym timer. They're looking for a digital clock. So let's still take that one out. But let's look at um, a uh, an example with the number of competing products. So competing products shows how competitive that you know keyword it would be to list a product under under it. And then CPR that's going to be the estimated number of units that need to be sold over eight days resulting from a search for this keyword in order for the product to rank on top uh, on top half of page one for this keyword. So what it's saying is Mag or, uh, Helium 10 believes that this keyword phrase is so competitive that you need to um, sell 115 pro uh, sorry, you need to give away 115 units across eight days for free organically to rank to the top of page one for workout equipment, okay? Um, now, there you could probably do that a lot easier way through reviews, but I'm not gonna get into that. But I wanna check and look at the review counts because unfortunately, Magnet does not show average review count. We need to figure that out ourselves. So let's click um, extension, and I'm gonna look at the average review count for this keyword and see if it's anything that we wanna go into in the future. I'm guessing it's gonna be pretty high. Yeah, so the average review count is 8,600, insane. I 
don't want to go after that, right? That's not a lean and mean approach. If I was a big company, I could afford to do that, but that's not me. That's not us. We want to find those those very niche keywords, and there's so many out there. So let's just find them. All right. So I want to uh, let's see. So gym timers one, and the goal, right? The guys, the, the goal is to find at least three different keywords with three different keywords that have at least a search volume of a thousand a month okay in a reasonable review count so i like the keyword gym timer that's one but let's see so here's our first one um and what about countdown timer and You know, we'll find another one here in this second. So countdown timer, this is loading. So I saw it before it's, where is it? It's, um, it's, it's workout timer. Sorry, one second. Okay, well, I cannot find it, but let's just do um, gym clock also. So gym clock, another great keyword. This is very niche. This is looking exactly like our product. And the review counts, as we could see, are reasonable. There's a couple high ones, but there's also a couple of reasons, you know, 282, uh, 460, 292, 64, 77. So this is another great keyword that I'm going to shoot after. So anyways, after I've cleaned this up, after I've, after you've cleaned up this list, we're going to save these keywords to use in the future when we create our listing, when we create our product title, our bullet points. We want to store this list and just save it for another time, right? So how we're going to do that, Helium 10 is awesome. We're going to click this box. And we are going to say add to my list and I already created a list here. If you haven't, you can click create new list or create new folder, click that into gym timer and those keywords are saved. And I'm going to do this for, a, you know, a couple different times. I'm going to look for, you know, different keywords. So let's say I want to use, um, gym clock. So let's click out of this gym clock. Let's see what magnet shows for keywords. So like I said, you know, 4,900 filtered keywords. I don't want to go through all those one by one, but I do want to search volume of at least 500 to drop it pretty fast. 33, 333. Um, if you really wanted to, you can get really specific, like key phrases containing gym. Cool. Awesome list. So these are obviously all really good keywords. There's probably some hidden gems in here, like, you know, home gym or, or you know, whatever the case. So let's uh, add those to our list and don't worry, it's going to erase any duplicates. So let's say gym clock is already in my list. It's going to erase the duplicate. So we're, we're fine to just kind of keep on adding. Uh, let's try a different phrase. Let's do a timer. Twenty four keywords. Cool. Those are all really good keywords. In case we didn't add those, let's add those to our list. So we're building this list, this folder of, uh, of keywords. All these are different ways of seeing our product. And we want to have our product be like the, the, the tree trunk and the roots are just ever growing of different keywords um, that people search for to find our product. So the more keywords that your product relates to, the more money you're gonna make. All right, so in the next video, we are going to find out how to find, we're gonna find more keywords by looking into what our competitors are using. All right, so I'll see you then.